I finally have a nice physical book to be talking about. So great not having to read on my laptop or my Kindle. This is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I'm hoping you can read it the right way when this comes out, but if not, that's what it is. And it's by Ransom Riggs. This book came out in 2011. And I haven't really heard much about it, but it is honestly a really great book. I can see it becoming as big as Harry Potter and um, Percy Jackson are for young, young adults and that kind of stuff. Because it really is a good book. It has a lot of aspects to it. When I first started reading it, it seemed like the book Skeleton Creek, which is um, kind of a scary little short novel that um that has links to videos that had to do with the um book but instead of having links this has creepy pictures so and then it also kind of reminds me of Nanny McPhee because there's um a headmistress who kind of acts the way Nanny, Nanny McPhee does in the movies when I first started reading this I said it was it seemed like the Chronicles of Narnia but I never really, no, I didn't know why I put that down. I, it was just like a subconscious thing. And then as I was reading on, I, I found out why. And I won't spoil it now. I'm going to leave this first part of this um, video for people who have not read the books. And so if they, they, it can help them decide if they do want to read the books, which I hope they do, because this honestly was a great book. I haven't read a really good book young adult book in a while so this is really good this is a good one to read but um yeah like I said there's pictures included I'll try to show one well the cover this is one of the pictures that is important to the book and it's kind of creepy like it, it's all old-fashioned pictures um because the author he was a collector of like old-fashioned pictures that you would like find at flea markets for like 50 cents that kind of stuff he explains it in this book um in an exclusive q a with author ransom riggs so which i find that quite interesting because the images they are interesting a little creepy but they are cool like it would be cool to have pictures from like like the world war ii era kind of stuff so yeah that was really interesting and then also it's kind of like a mystery book because one of the characters is trying to find information. So we're kind of snooping along with him trying to get information. And like I said, it's really, really good. So now if you have not read the book, I would recommend not watching the rest of this video because I will be giving quite the spoilers. I've warned you. You can't blame me if you continue watching and you hear stuff you do not want to hear or know about the book. This book, like I said, it was really interesting and I think one of the reasons why is because I found that the um, female ca character Emma, she kind of reminds me a lot of Annabeth from Percy Jackson and I love Annabeth so of course I'm going to like any character who kind of seems to be like her and it's not so much that she's like completely witty and smart and book smart and that kind of stuff emma is um she just has it, it seems like she has this strength that anna beth does because even though emma in the book she says she's scared quite a bit she doesn't let that affect like her trying to help people and do courageous stuff and I like that about characters and that kind of stuff but anyway Emma's not even the main character the main character is Jacob when he was a child around five years old his grandfather would always tell him stories what he thought were stories and like he idolized his grandfather but then when he was 15 his grandfather died and his whole world changed and he says that there was a before and after period and most people experience a before and after after like when a very major event happens in their lives and i think that's cool because it i think it's true that most people always like there's always a before and after for every part of people's lives not as not as great as this the one in here 
but it's still great. Like I said before, I said it was, I compared it to the Chronicles of Narnia, but I didn't really know why. I found out halfway through that this book is about time travel, which you would not guess when you first look at the cover or like the first chapter of this book. And that was really cool because it kind of, which one was it? I think it was Prince Caspian that it was the one where the kids, they get transported from the um, train station. And it's kind of like that, how it, like that kind of time travel with this. Actually, no, I think it's more like the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe because they actually have to go through. Anyway, it's kind of like Chronicles of Narnia where Jacob goes through a portal? I think that's what they called it. Something like that, but that's what I would call it. It was a portal that connected um, his world, which is like the continuous one. I think it probably is taking place his like that part of the book is taking place during 2010 something like that doesn't really say but um the other side of the portal that's where the 1940s is happening during world war ii and this is all in wales i think an island off of wales i've never i never never would have expected that this book that has a creepy child just standing there would be about time travel and the loops and that kind of stuff, like experiencing, uh, experiencing the same day over and over again, which I thought was really cool because this book, it did keep me wanting to read the next page, reading the next chapter, finishing the book, and then now I want to read the second book, but I'm probably going to wait until I can hold it because I like that feeling. And yeah, like in the beginning of the book, it says the grandfather um, tells Jacob, the main character, that a lot of the kids were, of course, peculiar, hence the title of the book. But I never figured that they'd have kind of like, not superpowers exactly, but superpowers. And I thought that was really, really cool. Just the whole story of how people and the children are peculiars and that kind of stuff. That was quite interesting. I kind of want a little bit more of that. In the next book. Also, I, 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 I know that there is time traveling and looping and that kind of stuff. But the thing is, I can't really grasp that concept that well. So I'm hoping in the next book there will be more of an explanation of why it is. Because at the end of this book, um, the loop has been broken. So they're trying to go to another loop in order to be safe or something like that. I really don't understand how their loop can be broken and they can't affect like the time that is continuing and how like, I don't know, just all that kind of stuff. I've been watching Doctor Who as well, so I don't, all that time stuff is just kind of confusing me at the moment. It's a little too much. <laughs> but um, some of my favorite parts of this book, one of them was, <laughs> when Jacob said something like, oh, I can't feel anything for Emma because um, she was his grandfather's ex-lover. <laughs> and he said it would be something like incest. And I thought that was hilarious because <laughs> their relationship is a bit is a bit weird, but I, I kind of ship them. I ship them kind of hard. I think they're going to be a new sh favorite ship of mine. And that was just hilarious. And then just their relationship to... It's not like the how most young adult um, relationships are where it's all like, oh, I need you and that kind of stuff. And if I don't have you, I'll be sad and I won't know how to live. This relationship is kind of, again, kind of like the Perkabeth um, relationship where they're kind of friends more than they are in a relationship. And I like that. I think that's what more young adult books need to be like because that's kind of how it happens but yeah so I like that part of the book and then I like how these kids rebel against authority because like I said um well I didn't really say but Miss Paragon she is the headmistress of the orphanage where the peculiar children it live and she is the reason why the loop keeps on looping why they keep on reliving the same day and she kind of 
when when danger arrives, which arrives around the same time as Jacob, Miss Peregrine, she she's the reason for the loop, like I said. So that in itself, the loop in itself is kind of a prison because they keep on reliving the same day over and over and they don't experience the real world. They don't go, they, they don't age really. They're all still kids, even though they could be like 80 years old in real time. So there's a, they're in that kind of prison. And then when danger comes back, Miss Peregrine makes it so they can't even like go outside or have fun like kids want to. And they prevent, she prevents the kids from like trying to see what's happening in the actual real time world where that's where some of the danger will come from. But like Emma and Jacob and some of the other peculiars, they, they don't listen and it does cause problems, but I don't know, I feel like I probably would have done the same thing in the same solution because you can't really just sit there and let the bad stuff come. You kind of have to meet it head on and that's what they did so I like that and then even like after some bad things have had occurred like um Miss Peregrine has was taken hostage by the bad guys and one of the peculiars was injured Jacob and um Emma they kept on doing what needed to be done in order to save the rest of them and I thought that was really good um, and yeah, talking about the bad guys, the description of them, there's even a picture in it, but the description, they're, they're like the monsters all little kids see in the dark and that kind of stuff, and I think that's why the first couple chapters of this book was quite creepy, because it was every little kid's nightmare. The corner of your mind that's still kind of like, that remembers being a little kid, it got freaked out. <laughs> And especially with the picture, that was just a creepy picture. But just, oh, the pictures are what makes this more creepy. I remember I was reading the beginning part, which I think is the creepiest part of the book, at night when I had most of my lights off. And oh, that was not a good idea at all. It looked like the pictures were staring right at me with like glowing eyes. And it was just, oh, it set the mood, definitely. But it also made me a little bit scared. And then... Another reason I really like this book is it has a lot of good quotes in it. Like, it has a lot of <laughs> true and nicely written sentences that could be said about life and uh, about anything, really. And I remember there was one in the beginning of the book, but I can't find it. But another one was that we cling to our fairy tales until the price for believing them becomes too high. That's really true. I really like that because when we're younger, we believe in like Santa Claus and all that kind of stuff. The Tooth Fairy and Cinderella and all those kinds of different fairy tales and stories and myths that we've been told. But at some point, you kind of, you stop believing and it's usually because of some reason. You either find out that your parents have been putting money under your bed or you see your parents putting presents under the Christmas tree or you've realized princesses aren't like they are in Disney movies and that kind of stuff but it's a nice thing to hold on to for a while and I think I don't know I just really like that part of the book and there's a lot of other quotes which I didn't write down but they're quite good oh and I was really happy during the beginning of the book, um, before, like, Miss Peregrine and all the peculiar children are really introduced, um, a peregrine bird appears in Jacob's room and scares him and is staring at him and something. And his, um, Jacob's dad, who's an ornithologist, studies birds, he said that a peregrine falcon, they're amazing creatures. The fastest birds on earth, they're like shapeshifters, the way they streamline their bodies in the air. And when I read that, I was like, oh my god, Miss Peregrine is actually a peregrine. She can shapeshift between being a human and a peregrine. And I bet you she has to do something with, like she controls time or something. That's how she's still alive, even though it's been, she'd be 90 if she still lived. 
and I was happy because that's exactly what happened. So I was like, yes, I got something right the first time around from a foreshadowing thing. I don't really catch on when that kind of those kinds of hints are going on. So I was quite proud of myself for catching that. But yeah. So I really think this is a really good book. Again, it's Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. Like I said, I don't know if I'm gonna make if I'm gonna read the next book. I don't have a hard copy of it, a physical copy. So I might wait until I go back home in June to get one. Or I might I might go looking around, I might buy one, maybe. I don't know. But I'll probably wait until I can hold a book because I just loved having that feeling again. Books just it's so different reading it in book form than it is on a laptop or a Kindle. I think it's more enjoyable on this. For one, you can read it anywhere, but I mean, I guess you can do it with a Kindle as well, but I prefer books. And the smell, the touch, they're just so much better than hard mm, technological thing. But yeah, if not, I have another hard copy book that I'll read, potentially. And yeah, so I hope you like this. Um, if you did, please like, please comment what um, your thoughts on the book were. Or if um, I should go ahead and start reading the second book right away because it's just that good. Or any other things, what you liked, what you didn't like about the book if you read it. That kind of stuff. Also, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and yeah.